This is the portrait of a very important bride. We might call her Mary Jones. But whatever her name, wherever she lives, she is the wife and mother of America. Her job is to make a home, the American home. Today, it is perhaps the most important job in the world. How many years will she have before the job gets her down? Will it take her youth, her good looks, her health? Will it spoil her disposition and finally wear her out? Well, thanks to American industry and America's sales force, her chances are a lot better than those of her grandmother. As a bride, grandmother had routine chores that Mary Jones will never have to bother with. And for the basic household routines that go on from generation to generation, Mary Jones has better and easier ways of doing nearly all of them. But there is one chore that in far too many homes has not changed much. The last stand of real drudgery in the life of the American woman. Grandmother's iron and ironing board are still with us. It is now streamlined and heated by electricity, but it is essentially the same chunk of iron and not much easier to handle. The job still gets Mary's back, arms and legs, just as it did grandmother's. If Mary Jones loses her looks, her health, her disposition, the breakdown is most likely to begin over the ironing board. But it need not happen. As soon as someone shows Mary the iron right story, her days of drudgery will be over. In other modern home appliances, there are dozens of makes. It is sometimes hard to decide which is best. They are called to Mary's attention at every turn. In choosing any of them, she can hardly go wrong. But iron right is unique. There are really only two ironers on the market, iron right and all others. Only Iron Right does away with the hand iron. Only Iron Right annihilates ironing drudgery. In Iron Right, the points of superiority are so instantly apparent that there is no comparison. Where other ironer rolls are supported at only one end and have only one usable open end, the Iron Right roll is supported at both ends and has both ends open. Using a roll supported at one end only is like rolling dough with only one hand. There is undue stress on the bearings, unequal pressure along the roll, and heat is so unevenly balanced that two thermostats are usually required. Besides, the user must try to do all ironing at one end, with certain operations on many garments a virtual impossibility. When Mary Jones is introduced to iron right, she finds an entirely different story. Iron Wright's exclusive patented roll is supported at both ends. Pressure and heat are evenly distributed and there is no bearing wear. Iron rights made 28 years ago are still giving perfect service. Heat rises. In other ironers, where the shoe is in back of the roll, the heat goes up and only part of it reaches the garment. The rest is wasted. With the iron right shoe, the heat travels up through the cloth with 100% efficiency. Then, following the counterclockwise motion of the roll, the heat and steam continue on up the back far from the user's face. With other ironers, Mary would have to feed the garment to be ironed in over the top of the roll, with greatly reduced chances of being able to control the ironing operation. Iron Wright's exclusive tilt-up forming board lets Mary see what's going to happen ahead of time. On the forming board, she can smooth out the wrinkles and arrange and guide the garment with ease. Perhaps the last doubt Mary might have would be something like this. 
How can that big roll possibly get into tiny gathers and ruffles? After all, my hand iron is pointed. Well, iron right has two points, one on each end of the shoe, and they get into any ruffle or gather as neatly and far quicker than any hand iron. And Mary won't have to swing a chunk of hot metal. Instead of lifting and guiding the point into the material, she simply guides the material into the point. Every iron right feature has been engineered to perfection. The operation has even been simplified to easy knee action. Her hands are always free. A touch of the right knee control brings the roll down and starts it turning against the shoe. Another touch raises the roll and stops it. Holding the left knee control stops the roll in the down position and allows for the drying of heavy seams, double thicknesses, and material that may have been over dampened. Once Mary Jones has seen Iron Wright breeze through every conceivable type of garment in the laundry basket, she will begin to see it as more than just an appliance. In a larger sense, she will see it as a magic key to greater freedom and happiness, better health, a creator of precious added time for living. Of course, after Mary receives her new iron right, she will need free home instruction by a factory trained instructor, and she will have to use her iron right a few times before she really becomes proficient. It's like riding a bicycle or driving a car. There's really nothing to it. Iron right salesmen demonstrate this fact to prospects by sitting down themselves and ironing shirts. Iron right instructors go a step farther and iron shirts while blindfolded. Well, Mary Jones has had her iron right for several weeks, and she now finds herself doing the ironing to relax when she's tired from other chores. What a difference between this and the old-fashioned way. Instead of standing over an ironing board with the prospect of having to lift and swing a hot iron several hundred times, Mary Jones is comfortably seated with nothing to do but guide a few ounces of cloth and operate two simple knee controls. And she can even be dressed to go out. With iron right, there's nothing to spoil a fresh manicure, nothing to impair the most carefully arranged coiffure. She simply sets the thermostat according to the material to be ironed and turns on the heat switch. Iron Wright's single thermostat is the last word in scientific heat regulation, accurately adjustable to exactly the degree of heat required for each type of fabric. Now the shoe has reached the proper temperature, so Mary turns on the motor and she's ready to go. A man's shirt spells plain work for the hand ironer. On the iron right, it is no harder to do than a napkin. There are only five steps to a man's shirt when ironed on the iron right. The sleeve is made with the fullness gathered into the cuff. To straighten and smooth the body of the sleeve, she can lay it on top of the roll. She drops the cuff under the roll out of the way and feeds the sleeve in at an angle, pulling the gathers out over the point. If fullness at the cuff is in pleats, these are held in place and ironed down flat. She continues right up to the shoulder seam. Then she turns the sleeve over and irons the other side on the opposite end of the iron right. For the cuffs, she feeds one in on the right side of the forming board with the wrong side of the material next to the shoe and irons up to the body of the sleeve. When the cuff is under the roll, she stops the roll for a moment to press the cuff thoroughly. For the right side of the cuff, she turns it over on the opposite end of the forming board and shoe. In ironing the back of the shirt, Iron Wright does the job of six hand irons at once. She starts with the tail, with the wrong side of the material down on the forming board. She irons to the armholes, and it only takes a jiffy. Then she raises the roll, shifts the shirt slightly to make sure that the armholes are open and the points of the shoe fitted into the sleeves. This applies to shirts size 15 or larger. With smaller shirts, a slightly different system is used. She continues ironing up onto the yoke, just like that. Here she uses the left knee control to stop the roll for the pressing action to thoroughly dry the yoke. She removes the shirt from the ironer at this point by taking hold of the sleeves and lifting it up toward her. She irons the collar by feeding it in flat 
with the wrong side of the material down. Then she turns it over and repeats the operation. Now for the front. There's nothing to it. She grasps one front by the tip of the collar and the bottom of the opening, right side down, and irons across the front to the armhole seam. She then raises the roll, moves the shirt down to the third button, and irons across to the side seam. When finishing the fronts, she uses the left knee control to press the button and buttonhole strips down the front. All double thicknesses of material and all heavy seams can be pressed to dry them thoroughly. Now there remains only one other operation and the shirt is ready for occupancy by the head man in Mary's life. And he'll tell you that a shirt that's ironed right is one of life's greatest sources of satisfaction. Now, Mary Jones takes stock of this operation. She has taken about four minutes to iron the shirt, as against 12 minutes the hand iron way. When Mary visualizes all the shirts that must be ironed during the year, to say nothing of all the other clothes, those 10-minute time savings add up to extra hours and days for living. Some other garments that Mary Jones wondered about before she saw her first iron right demonstration were little girls' dresses, especially when embellished with puffed sleeves and ruffles. Very cute, except on the ironing board. Mary has learned that since these little dresses vary considerably, each garment requires individual study as to the best procedure to follow. In this case, Mary first irons the shoulder seam folded. If the neckline is large enough, the shoulder seam may be ironed singly by placing the shoulder over the forming board. Puffed sleeves are folded double with the crease in the middle and around the sleeve. Place over point of the shoe and iron up into the gathers. The cuff is ironed on an open end last. One sleeve is ironed on one end of the shoe, the other on the opposite end. The right sleeve is ironed the same way, switching over to the left open end of the roll. This special iron right advantage is brought to Mary's attention on every garment in the clothes basket. There are many types of sleeves in little dresses like this, but there is an iron right way to do them all more quickly and more easily. If the collar is circular, it can be fed into the ironer at the end of the roll over the point on the shoe. It is ironed in this manner, a section at a time, until completed. If the collar is straight, it is fed in flat and parallel with the forming board. The pressing operation is employed to dry it. Dresses made with a yoke and a full gathered skirt are done by ironing the yoke before the skirt. The divided part of the yoke or waist can be ironed by placing the halves over the ends of the shoe and ironing up to the collar. The closed part of the yoke may be folded in sections and ironed down from the collar to the waistline. It looks simple, and it is simple.
The skirt, Mary places on the forming board, then irons around it by keeping the skirt on an angle. She irons into the gathers with the shoe points, raising the roll from time to time to arrange the material. When she irons skirts that are pleated all the way around, she arranges them on the roll and pins them in place. One half of the pleats are done in one operation. The other half of the pleated skirt is done in the same way on the other open end of the iron right roll. Let the designers of Kitty's clothes dream them up. Mary and her iron right are ready for anything. Other garments that have always been a chore on the ironing board have been Mary's own wash dresses, requiring up to 15 minutes work on each. Here again, there are many styles, but a method for doing each will quickly suggest itself. If the sleeves have gathers at the top, they may be placed over the point of the shoe, pulled out and ironed from the fullness down to the bottom of the sleeve. If there is a cuff on the sleeve, Mary uses the pressing action to dry it thoroughly. The shoulder seam can be ironed double on the end of the shoe. Or if the dress is made with a large enough opening for the neckline, the shoulder can be placed on the end of the forming board singly and ironed without creasing. When the waist is open to the belt, Mary irons the fronts separately, placing the garment on the forming board and doing one front on one end of the shoe and the other front on the opposite end. When the dress is fitted at the waist, making for a small waistline, Mary irons the underarm seam first by placing the dress doubled on the forming board and ironing for about four inches from the seam toward the center of the dress. She later misses this iron section when ironing the body of the dress. Now Mary irons the hem to ensure an even hemline. She puts the body of the dress over the shoe and forming board exactly as she used to do with her ironing board. Throughout iron right operations, nearly all moves are familiar to hand ironers, only they are much easier and faster. If the dress is longer, as in the case of a house coat, she does the top first, then slips the iron portion off the end of the shoe and irons around the lower part of the skirt. She has learned to always put the wrong side of the material down. This brings out the design in printed patterns and imparts a better finish to all synthetic materials. Men's shorts are a cinch. She takes the crotch seam and brings it back to pull one leg inside of the other. She slips them over the shoe and irons on around. When the material starts to wrinkle, she raises the roll, straightens and rearranges the material, and continues until the finish. This job often takes no more than a few seconds. Men's wash slacks are no trouble either. She first irons the pockets, then over the open end of the shoe, she irons the top from the fly on around the pocket to the middle of the seat. She then irons the other side the same way on the other end of the shoe. Slacks with pleats in front can be ironed by placing the front on the end of the shoe and ironing with the pleat from the top of the trouser down to the bottom of the fly opening. Now she lines up the seams in the trouser leg and feeds the cuff in first, ironing to the crotch. Then, retaining her hold on the leg, she slides the slacks to the open end of the shoe and continues up the crease to the top of the trouser. She turns the leg over and repeats this on the other side. 
using the left knee control frequently to dry out damp seams. The head man can look sharp anywhere, anytime now. His wash slacks are no longer a problem. Wool slacks or trousers offer no problem either. Here is something you can't even wash, but Iron Right presses them beautifully merely by placing a strip of wrapping paper between the shoe and the material. Curtains. Ruffled curtains are a real project for the hand ironer. Big double curtains take up to an hour apiece on the ironing board. This is how Mary Jones does big ruffled curtains in less than 15 minutes. The ruffles should be ironed first, and with them, Mary easily slips into the restful iron right rhythm. She inserts the ruffle at a slant over the end of the shoe and lets the ruffle run off naturally, ironing a small section at a time. This is where the points at either end of the iron right shoe can really be appreciated. Part of the ruffle should be done on one open end and the remainder on the other. By feeding the ruffle at a slant, the shoe point runs directly into the ruffle to the seam, exactly as in ironing by hand, but without any weight lifting. It is one of the things that really sold Mary on iron right. These points get into all hard to reach places, all pleats, yokes, ruffles. With ordinary ironers, the user normally has to finish these by hand. The body of the curtain is ironed with the ironed ruffles extending over the ends of the forming board and shoe. Regardless of the width, the curtain can be ironed in sections until it is done. Regular flat work, upon which Mary Jones first started to practice when she first got her iron right, is no trouble at all. Sheets, as large as they come, Mary irons by folding lengthwise and ironing down the selvage edge from the wide hem to the small hem. She keeps the material taut and straight by placing her fingers between the edges while ironing the length of the sheet. To avoid wrinkling, she raises the roll and shakes the sheet out when loose material gathers. After running the selvage edge through, she takes the sheet out of the ironer and lays it in her lap in this manner. She then feeds the small hem end in and irons the other selvage. The ironing continues until the sheet is folded in four and passed through for the fourth and last time. A smooth iron right iron sheet like this is a sure cure for insomnia. Because of iron right's two open ends, large linen tablecloths can be ironed singly with no creases, especially embroidered cloths. Large lace tablecloths are ironed singly with the pattern or raised side placed next to the roll. With other ironers, it is almost impossible to iron the center of a cloth like this without creasing it, and creases will soon ruin it. And so it goes. Try to stump iron right? It can't be done. From pillowcases, to napkins, to frilly dresses, lingerie, the most fragile nightgowns, Little girls' clothes. Little boys' clothes. Clothes of all kinds for big girls and big boys. Ruffles by the hundreds. Knife pleats by the dozen. There's nothing hard for Ironrite. Nothing that Ironrite can't do faster and better. Besides all its other accomplishments, Iron right can be used to steam velvet with the aid of a moistened towel over the shoe. 
Mary Jones has found that all the features of iron right spell convenience and ease of operation, the end of ironing drudgery. The two identical usable open ends, she couldn't do without them. The tilt-up forming board that makes arranging any garment easy. The two shoe points that made it possible for Mary to throw her hand iron away. The heat-holding under-roll cast iron shoe sends the heat directly up into the garment and not into the user's face. The two simple adjustable knee controls that leave your hands free to guide the material. The new overall streamlined styling with satin finish and rounded corners that can't catch garmishly for use with iron right ironers. It ensures perfect seating posture and comfort and adjusts itself automatically as you change positions. Three styles to choose from. Model 80, designed for the home laundry. Model 85, a smart unit for any homemaker's kitchen with baked enamel finished hood that is a worktop area when closed. The cabinet model in either mahogany or honey finish hardwoods. A piece of furniture that will fit into the decor of almost any room in the house. But regardless of the model, the iron right is the same soundly engineered, time-tested appliance built by a company that has always devoted all of its attention to the production of iron right. It is the unique appliance that crosses out the last stand of old-fashioned drudgery in the lives of American women. Yes, Mary Jones has a lot more to look forward to than had her grandmother. Grandmother's flat iron has been retired now, and so has its lineal descendants. Mary's health, her look, her disposition are safe for a long, long time. Since ironing has become a pleasure, a form of relaxation with Iron Right. The breakdown is most likely to begin over the ironing board. But it need not happen. As soon as someone shows Mary the Iron Right story, her days of drudgery will be over. In other modern home appliances, there are dozens of makes. It is sometimes hard to decide which is best. They are called to Mary's attention at every turn. In choosing any of them, she can hardly go wrong. But iron right is unique. There are really only two ironers on the market. Iron right and all others. Only iron right does away with the hand iron. Only iron right annihilates ironing drudgery. This is the portrait of a very important bride. We might call her Mary Jones. But whatever her name, wherever she lives, she is the wife and mother of America. Her job is to make a home, the American home. Today, it is perhaps the most important job in the world. In Iron Right, the points of superiority are so instantly apparent that there is no comparison. Where other ironer rolls are supported at only one end and have only one usable open end, the iron right roll is supported at both ends and has both ends open. Using a roll supported at one end only is like rolling dough with only one hand. There is undue stress on the bearings unequal pressure along the roll, and heat is so unevenly balanced that two thermostats are usually required. Besides, the user must try to do all... How many years will she have before the job gets her down? Will it take her youth, her good looks, her health? Will it spoil her disposition and finally wear her out? Well, thanks to American industry and America's sales force, her chances are a lot better than those of her grandmother. As a bride, grandmother had routine chores that Mary Jones will never have to bother with. 
And for the basic household routines that go on from generation to generation, Mary Jones has better and easier ways of doing nearly all of them. But there is one chore that in far too many homes has not changed much. The last stand of real drudgery in the life of the American woman. Grandmother's iron and ironing board are still with us. It is now streamlined and heated by electricity, but it is essentially the same chunk of iron and not much easier to handle. The job still gets Mary's back, arms and legs, just as it did grandmother's. If Mary Jones loses her looks, her health, her disposition, 